So wasn't it interesting how um, Rhiannon was saying about seeing her mum when she eventually will be able to after having both of the injections, the vaccination, that she'll then see her mum and be able to hug her for the first time in 15 months and her children. Yes. So I was thinking, did you used to see your grandmother? I never saw my grandmother. I never saw either of my grandparents. Uh, the first time I remember seeing my grandparents, that's my grandparents in the north of Ireland. That's my, grand, my dad's parents, both down. And the only thing I can remember about those two grandparents, that they were in a dark room. They were very dark to look at. Uh, so we were out on the street mainly playing in the, yeah, the street. And then my grand, my mother's mother, she was English, my grandma, her mother, lived in uh, Ashford in Kent. And we never saw her because she was living there all during the war. She never came to her. So we never saw them at all. We never saw my, my grandmother. And my mother used to get letters from her. And the letters used to have bits cut out of them. Everything was censored. Oh, it's terrible. My poor mother, I don't know how she managed it, really, because she never saw her all during the war. She couldn't travel there. You didn't have Zoom. You didn't have um, a telephone. You didn't have WhatsApp and all these things you have I nowadays. I mean, I really miss my grandchildren, but... Yes, you but know, you can speak to them. I can speak to them. And, I can and you see can them. write them stories. And yeah. it's my, my grandmother, my English grandmother, Elsie Martindale, she used to... Um, it was a very, very, very good at embroidery and all these crafts that people did in those days. And they um, she used to send us embroidery threads. We used to be so excited when we'd get the little parcel from my grandmother. And my mother then would teach us how to do the embroidery, all the different stitches. Why, why did you not stay in Ireland? Why did you come to England? Because I had uh, finished my first uh, year of Montessori. Montessori is a special method of teaching children uh, through the senses. So the, the, everything was tactile, visual, hearing, smell, everything like that. So it was all um, very tactile. And uh, so children learned through play and through uh, activities to do with the senses. So, um, anyway, Montessori in those days was very, very popular. It still is popular, but the college I went to in Dublin only trained up until the, the children were seven, and I wanted to continue on to the age of 14. So I had to come to England, this little college, and um, it was in Surrey, Cranley in Surrey. So I decided, oh, right, I'm going to England. It was my friend Mary Shields who was in London. So I borrowed 10 pounds off my brother, John, and I bought a gabardine. A gabardine was a, a special coat, which was very fashionable in those days. And Wilson used to wear these. He was the first person. Wilson in those days was the prime minister. And he was very famous. And he wore these gabardines. So I thought, oh, I'd look good in a gabardine. So I bought myself a brown gabardine. I got on the boat in... Um, the North War over to Liverpool. So I had my little brown suitcase and my gabardine, and I just thought that was the reason. I got out of the boat and I trotted along with my little suitcase, and I had, uh, I, by that time, I, I had actually bought a second hand pair of wedges. Wedges were the business in those days. And I sat and I thought, now what am I going to do? I haven't got the fare to get to London. So I sat under the statue of the liver bird and I thought to myself, oh dear, now what am I going to do? And this young fella came and sat next to me. So he, he said, hey, hello there. And I said, oh, hello, how are you? So he said, where, where, where are you from? I said, I'm from uh, the West of Ireland. He said, well, where are you going now? He said, uh, I said to him, well, I'm going to London. He said, well, have you got the fair? I said, you know what I have? So he said, well, he said, I, I've got a lorry. I've got a big lorry, and um, I'm going to, if you like, you can have a lift, because I'm going to London as well. So I said, oh, why not? So I got in the lorry, and he drove me all the way to Piccadilly. Now, Piccadilly in those days was the place where all the 
ladies of the night used to be. So I said, I'm going to Sloan Square. He said, well, I'll drop you off at Piccadilly. So anyway, my friend was living, my friend Mary Shields was living in a hostel, a uh, women's hostel. But I didn't have the money to pay to live there, two and sixpence a week. And I didn't have the money, so I used to sleep. We were in a, in a room with four, four people in a room. And I got myself a job in Marble Arch, Joe Lyons Corner House. They were very famous in those days. So I got myself a job as a washer-upper. In Dublin, I was in a, in a convent boarding school, and then I was in the, the training college, which was run by nuns. So we were very secluded. And in those days, there were no black people or other nationalities in Ireland. It was mainly Irish people. But there were no black people. Anyway, in this kitchen, it was all black people. I, I was absolutely terrified. I thought they were going to eat me. None of them spoke English. Not one person spoke English. And here was I, the only woman with all these black people. Men. It's all men. Okay. Oh, God, I was terrified. Anyway, so I carried on for, I think, three days. And I think I walked out of the back of the pen because I was so frightened. I thought, I thought these. Anyway, the job that I, I had a job as a nanny to go to until the college opened in Green Street in Cranley somebody else had taken my job and I got a job with um, another family as a nanny. In those days you used to buy the lady, the lady magazine was very popular in those days for people of my self-employment. So then in the September of course the college opened so I ran the little nursery school there, there were 13 children. Uh, so that was how I got to England, and then it carried on. And when you were looking for, when you first arrived, you, I remember you saying to me about on the doors, the signs saying mm -hmm. no blacks, no Irish, no animals. The signs that were up in the windows was uh, no for accommodation, no blacks, no children, no dogs, and no Irish. But in actual fact, it is. Used to be no niggers. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Can you imagine that nowadays? No. It's shocking. Mm. Shocking the way people were treated. Mm. If you had an Irish accent, you would be just for granted. It is. It still happens. You think it's changed a lot. And why did John move over here? It was a very small boat and it was a cattle boat. It had no stabilizers. Oh, and it was very sick. crowded because it was just after the war and a lot of people were coming to and men were coming to England to work, to send money home to their families, but there was no work in Ireland in mm. those days. Everybody was being seasick, it was horrible. Oh. It was a long crossing because it was a slow boat. And um, I felt okay. I wasn't, didn't feel sick, actually. I had one little suitcase, little suitcase like that. In those days, there were none of these fancy trolleys or mobiles or anything like that. So you just had the little suitcase and you carried that. And a lot of the people didn't have suitcases. They had, had Hessian bags with their stuff inside in the Hessian bag. They couldn't afford a suitcase. It was like a Hessian sack. A sack, yes, a sack. And, uh, you know, the old sacks, those, uh, anyway, that's the, they were brown. And uh, they, uh, they just had them tied around with a piece of string or something. Mm. Twine, they called it. I, I think I was very brave, actually. I, think uh, I just had to, get, I had to get out of Dublin. I just thought I'd have to escape. Not that I was unhappy there, because I wasn't. I was very happy. 
but I just felt it was my time to go. Mm. They they knew I was going to England in um, September to do mm. to do uh, the second year of Montessori, but they were a bit worried, obviously, because mm. uh, I wrote them a letter. You left them, them a letter? Yeah, I, no, I wrote them a letter. They were in the restaurant, right. and I was in Dublin. Yeah. You see, yeah. three hundred and sixty-five miles. Yeah. But by this time, my grandmother was was dead. Mm. My my grandmother that I missed so much. I had spent. I'd left school when I was eighteen. Went to to the Montessori College in Dublin from 18 to 19, mm. and then I jumped. Mm. You kind of got some of that from your mum, because she had that same drive as you and ambition. And she went from England to Ireland as an English young lady, didn't she? How old was Granny? Yeah, she? my mother was a boarder in a school in St. Leonard's on Sea, the Holy Child Convent, from the age of four. She had a scholarship to Oxford to, um, to uh, study music. But because it was during the war, she decided that she would do something for her country. Because all the men were gone to war, so she would do something for her country. So she worked on the land. She was on a, line, a land girl. You've heard about the land girls, haven't you? Mm. And she got very attached to animals. So she... Um, tried to get into the Beckley College in England and she couldn't, they wouldn't have women in the Beckley Colleges in England, would you believe it? But in Ireland, they could. So she applied to Ireland. They said, yes, you can, you, you can come here and study, but you have to have your matriculation in those days and she didn't have to study Latin. She hadn't studied Latin before and she had to study and get her matriculation between January and September to get into the college. Wow. And she got in. Her mother and father couldn't afford much money to pay for her to be in Dublin. But my, my grandfather, in other words, Lord Maddox Ford, bought her a caravan. So she lived in a caravan in Dublin. And she um, lived outside in the caravan and drove and uh, it's in the caravan, Dublin. and she used to go on her horse into the veterinary college in Dublin. And she tied the horse up with a piece of rope around a lamppost, with an, and she'd give the, the horse a nose bag uh, with hay in it. She studied for seven years, and those, year, those days it was seven years of study to become a veterinary surgeon. There were two other, there was one other girl with her, um, and the two of them studied. So these three women were the first three women in the British Isles to become veterans, women veterans. Mm. And my mother, in, in her final years, came first in her exams. Wow. Well, what, out of the three women? Or out of, out of the, all the men. So out the men, of everyone? Out of everybody, she came, she came first. Wow. So she was very clever. My mother was very clever. She was also a very good musician. And while she was at the uh, college, she met my father. That's how come she's... That's how you're here? Yeah, that's how I'm here. No, that's how I was there. Yeah. That's how I was born there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they moved. That's another story. <laughs>